Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. This is the fourth video on our journey to our building a usable amplifier around a differential pair of transistors. It's turning out that it puts into play almost everything that we've learnt up to this point. A current source, a current mirror, a common emitter amplifier, and a pair of emitter followers. So let's take a minute or two to review our circuit so far. We have designed an amplifier that would amplify the difference between the voltages at its two inputs, which we labeled with plus and minus signs. The amplifier consisted of a so-called long-tailed pair of transistors, which computed the difference between the voltages at the two ports, cancelled out any common signal very effectively, and applied a little bit of gain. We followed that stage with a common emitter amplifier to boost the gain further. The combined gain of the two stages was about 500. Like all common emitter amplifiers, that second stage has a relatively high output impedance, so we added a push-pull follower to lower it to a more usable figure. We decided to treat this circuit as a module and started to test it out. Our first test setup connected a function generator to the plus input through a 1000 to 1 voltage divider. We simply grounded the minus input. When we tried running this circuit, we discovered that we had two problems. Small imbalances among the components were magnified by the high gain, so we had to add an offset of several times the input voltage to bring the output into range. And the push-pull-output stage gave our signal horrible crossover distortion. I promised at the end of the episode that this time we'd fix both problems with the magic of negative feedback. So let's get started. Before we continue, I ask you to indulge me for a brief public service announcement. Your support for this channel has been really outstanding, and the channel has grown to where I'm seeing a small amount of revenue from YouTube. I love you all. You've been wonderful. And so I know you'll respond to the call to take care of one another that I put at the end of every video. I've decided that the whole of my January 2025 payment from YouTube will go to the Against Malaria Foundation. The Foundation's sole mission is to provide insecticidal nets to people living in places where malaria is endemic. Its performance is outstanding among the charities that I've examined in terms of lives saved per dollar spent, to say nothing of the humanitarian and economic benefits of reducing disease burden in the tropical nations of the world. If you're inclined to fight bugs in more places than our circuits, I hope you'll join me in supporting this charity. There should be an affiliate link down there, or up there, or in any case somewhere nearby. Thank you so much for your generosity. And back to the video. What I propose doing is to remove the voltage divider from the input circuit, so we'll be looking at higher level signals. In place of the ground on the minus input, I'll feed back the amplifier's output through a voltage divider, with a divider ratio of 10. Let's see if we can calculate what's going to happen. I'll introduce a few symbols. A is the differential gain of our amplifier. For this amplifier, we measured it at 500. V off is the input offset voltage of the amplifier. We measured negative 6.1 millivolts. B is the divider ratio in the feedback network, which is 10 in this design. We can model our amplifier's output as a simple linear function of its two inputs. And of course, we have the formula for the voltage divider. Let's substitute it into the formula for V out on Algebra Autopilot. This is the usual formula for an amplifier with negative feedback, a finite gain, and a non-zero input offset. But I think it will be clearer what's going on if we divide both the numerator and denominator by A. What this equation is telling us is that the circuit's gain will be the divider ratio that we programmed, divided by a correction factor for finite gain. The correction factor will be close to 1, 
because the term B over A will typically be small. In this circuit, it's just 1 50th, so I predict the gain will be about 9.8 rather than 10. The input offset will be multiplied by the overall circuit gain, so the 6.1 millivolt offset at the input will be a 60 millivolt offset at the output. But wait, didn't we forget about the crossover distortion? Well, not really. Recall what happened with crossover distortion. The output signal tried to mirror the input signal, but the upper half cycle was offset downward toward the ground by one diode drop, and the lower half cycle was offset upward toward the ground by the same one diode drop. So we got a trace that tracked the peaks and troughs accurately, but flattened when it crossed over the axis. Let me trace over the signals and clear away some of the clutter of the scope screen so that we can look at this from another perspective. I'll also lower the input signal so that they're both shown on the same set of axes. Now consider, what if we added an offset voltage of one diode drop divided by the amplifier gain to the plus input? We'd raise the output signal by that same diode drop, but the crossover points would move. The whole upper half cycle would mirror the input signal. Similarly, if we were to lower the input signal by one diode drop divided by the circuit gain, the output would lower by one diode drop. The crossover points would move, and the output would once again mirror the input for half a cycle. There's absolutely no reason that these equations won't work with different offsets on the two half cycles. One 600 millivolt diode drop divided by the amplifier gain of 500 is 1.2 millivolts, so I'll just say that the input offset voltage is negative 6.1 millivolts plus or minus 1.2 millivolts. This offset will appear in the output, multiplied by the overall circuit gain of 9.8, so the total error that these offsets bring to the output is between 48 and 72 millivolts. That's not even going to be visible on the scope superimposed on a 10 volt output signal. I'll guess that crossover distortion is not going to be a worry. So I'll add that divider and give it a try. The result is nearly perfect. Here I'm showing a two-tenths of a volt signal in, the yellow trace at the top. The purple trace at the bottom is the output from our amplifier, and is pretty close to a perfect sine wave with a gain of 10. There's no visible crossover distortion. We've finally mostly tamed this circuit. It's temperature stable, it's got a well-controlled gain, its input impedance is huge, tens of megohms, and its output impedance is no more than a few hundred ohms. Just to show how hard it's working, I also put the output of the gain stage on the middle trace. In the top half cycle, it's running six-tenths of a volt high to compensate for the base emitter drop of one output transistor, and in the bottom half cycle, it's running six-tenths of a volt low to compensate for the base emitter drop of the other output transistor. It is supplying anti-crossover distortion, to coin a bad description. As I said, Negative feedback is a cure to a great many ills in our circuits. Let's try something else with this. Something even simpler. What I want to do is build a nearly perfect follower. Take a voltage at the input and produce the same voltage at the output, with extremely high impedance at the input so it doesn't load whatever's producing the input, and an extremely low impedance at the output so it can derive a variety of loads. That ought to be easy, I think. Just pull out that voltage divider and replace it with a simple wire. The circuit gain of our amplifier was represented with a simple equation. In the equation A was the gain of our amplifier, about 500, and V off was the amount of error that our amp contributes to the input voltage, about 6 millivolts. B was the divider ratio of the voltage divider that we were using for feedback. A simple wire, of course, would give us a ratio of 1. Put it all together, and it looks as if the output errors should be tiny, one-fifth of one percent in gain, and a few millivolts of constant offset. This should be a piece of cake. In fact, I should be able to leave the feedback resistors on the breadboard and just move the minus input of the amplifier to its output. A 30k load will be nothing to that push-pull follower. All it should take is moving this one DuPont wire. Well, and boosting the gain on the scope, because now my output is only one-tenth the level it was previously. But not all is well with the world. That bottom trace is thick. 
There's some sort of spurious high-frequency signal on it. If I zoom in on the signal, both horizontally and vertically, I have to zoom in quite a way. But our circuit is oscillating at about 13 megahertz, with an amplitude of a tenth of a volt or so. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for in this episode. I'm going to have to break it off here, with an amplifier that's unstable at unity gain. Next time, I'll show how to fix that issue, and come up with an amplifier that's more generally usable. If you don't want to miss that, I understand that there are ways you might hint to the YouTube algorithm if you want to see it. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye!